Welcome back to Bikes with Ben. Today I'm going to show you a GPS animator tool I created for DaVinci Resolve. And the reason for that tool is this guy right here. My GoPro that I use on all my rides to film trail footage. When I get back from a ride and I'm uploading that footage, what I've been wanting to do for a while now is to take this, my GPS data from Strava or Garmin or whatever device, and turn it into this. A simple overlay that shows an overview of the course and a dot that's synced to me so you can see where I'm at on the course. Why a tool like this doesn't exist, I'm not sure, but I had to create one, and I've refined it enough now that I'm happy sharing it with you guys. The tool is linked somewhere here, it's shown on the screen, and it's in the comments. It's at gpstool.bikeswithben.com. On that website, you upload your GPX file, which is a list of coordinates with time from your GPS device, and it lets you export an SVG and a spline file. SVG is a fancy picture, and uh, Spline is a timing file that tells the dot where it needs to be on the course so that you can sync it with your GoPro. From there, you take those files to DaVinci Resolve, link a few things up, and then you can overlay this on any of your ride videos. This isn't specific to mountain bikes. Anywhere you have video footage and GPS data, you can use this tool. This is all written in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So if you don't wanna to go to my website for any reason, there's no ads there, I'm not tracking any of your stuff, but if you don't wanna upload your GPS data to a website, I completely get it. All of the code is down below. You can download it and run it locally. You can also modify this code to add a bunch more functionality if you know what you're doing. That would be awesome, I would love to see that. I'm gonna put a technical guide of how I did all of this at the end of this video. It'll be linked in the chapter, so if you wanna skip right to that, great. For now though, let's focus on the tutorial. We're gonna hop right over to the computer and I'll show you how to use the website how to export the files, import them into DaVinci, and then overlay that on your video. Let's go. All right, we're over here at the computer. I've got DaVinci Resolve open, and I've got a bunch of ride files here from a recent ride I did at Settlers Cabin Park here in Pittsburgh. So I've lined these all up, so my full ride is shown here. And the first thing we need to do is check what the frame rate of our footage is. So if you click on this little eye on any of these footage, uh, any of these pieces of video, it'll tell you some details about it. And we can see right here that the frame rate is 59.94. That's what we're gonna to need to type into the website so we can get the spline file to line up properly. So let's go to the website. You go to gpstool.bikeswithben.com. All you have to do is upload a GPX file here. So the GPX file, as I said earlier, can, you can get from Strava or from your Garmin or pretty much any GPS device. It's a pretty standard format for GPS. Um, I've created this tool using Strava exports, so there may be some variations um, in how it interprets that GPX file with other tools. Let me know. Um, I can try to take a look at the code, see if we can modify it a bit. But for now, it's really built for Strava exports. Um, we'll have to add some more functionality to make it more, you know, more feasible for other people. So you select your GPX file, hit open, and it's going to show you the overview of your ride. So right here is where I started. I actually ended up uh, starting my GPS late, so it doesn't show it starting till right here. But then it shows the whole route and where I ended. This dot here is what we're going to use to animate to show where we are on the map, but we're going to move that around in, in DaVinci, so don't worry about it being straight in the middle of the page right now. You're going to type in 59.94 as your frame rate, and then your main color, if you don't like this one, you can change it up, make it a little darker. Our drop shadow, we can make the main one a little wider, let's make the drop shadow a little wider, and then we can offset the drop shadow more if we want, that looks pretty good right there. Now we can hit download on the SVG. We hit download on the SPL. Now for me, the SPL file gives me a warning on Chrome. It says, um, this file can't be verified, download unverified file. We're gonna download it. What that gives you here is, if I open this up, we can open this in a text editor. All that SPL file was, or is, is a list of coordinates. So the left side here is frames. 59, 177, 295, and the right side is basically percent completion. So this is how much from zero to one that you are on your path. Uh, in DaVinci, these are called paths. Uh, the, let's see, this is called a path here. So that path from zero right here to one, where is that dot at? So in this case here, at the first second, I'm barely through it. If I scroll down here to the bottom, you can see I'm getting closer and closer to finishing. And then at frame 202,000, which is about 57, 60 minutes, somewhere in that range, I finish. So that's all that spline file does. And then the SVG file is just the SVG. Uh, it's just the image. 
Um, an SVG file calculates an image uh, by connecting dots together, so it's all math, so you can zoom in infinitely. And it doesn't, there's no pixels here, so it doesn't get blurry as I zoom in. Uh, but it's the perfect thing to, we already have all the dots, our GPS data, and we can sync that all together, you know, link that all together and make this SVG now. So what we can do with this is open up DaVinci Resolve, and over here, I'm on the Edit tab right now. Over here, you're going to right-click and create new Fusion composition. Uh, you can name this, so we'll call this uh, you know, GPS Overlay Tutorial. Frame rate 59.94, and the uh, name or the duration of this needs to match what that was. So if you if you noticed in our download for our SPL, it says 00571700. So that's 57 minutes and 17 seconds. I can just copy this. Actually, I don't think it's gonna copy well, but 5717 is what I need. So I can copy, but I have to. Uh, replace with colons if I do it that way. Either way, you just need to make the duration of the clip 57 minutes, 17 seconds, or whatever matches your SPL file. Hit create, and now we've got this overlay tutorial that has nothing in it yet. If we right click it, open in Fusion page. What we'll see here is our media out, which is nothing, um, and then we'll see a spline file. Um, you might not see this spline. If you click up here in the top right, you can show or hide that, that spline. For now, we can hide it, and we need to import our SVG file. So to do that, we're gonna to go to Fusion, Import, SVG. We're gonna select our SVG file, hit Open, and leave this the same. So this is just gonna normalize. You can change this, but you wanna make sure the aspect ratio stays the same. This is just using the uh, sizing based from based on my website, 1080p to 1920, it tries to fit it in that closest box. It's gonna be plenty big for what you're trying to do for your video. Hit okay here. And then, oh yeah, I'm glossing over terms here, uh, if I exit out. So when you hit okay, you get this kind of grouped uh, area here. If you double click it, you can open this up. And what this is showing us, um, DaVinci, if I link this line to this line right here, that'll show me my path with the dot. Um, each one of these, you can hit this dot here to show over there. That's the shadow path. Here's the main path. Here's the outline dot, the main dot, and then some random background that I'm not using. Um, these don't have color when you look at them here. Um, come on, come on. There we go. But each of these backgrounds adds the color to this as well. So if you changed it in the website and you want to change the color again, you can just click on this like background two, and over here double click you can change this color now to be a little bit more green, sure, or yellow. Um, that's how you can modify it after the fact. You don't need to change anything as far as these goes. All you need to do is take uh, this line, if I can get it, there we go, drag it to media out. So now you have a static image of your route. We need to make this dot go up here and animate itself. So to get started, what you need to do is click on Main Path, and then over here in the right-hand corner, if you don't see all of this information, it's because it's hidden up here, you can double-click, it'll open up, and you need to right-click here for Shape Animation. So right-click and hit Publish. That's going to allow this path data to be used by other items like our dot. So let's click on our main dot over here. If you don't see this, again, double-click to open it up. You're going to right-click on Center. This is going to animate the center line of our dot. So if you see that's gonna move there, we'll reset these defaults. Right click, animate. Now we're able to animate these two things and it opens this modifier tab. So if you click modifiers, here you can click right click here for shape animation and hit connect to main path polyline value. This is now gonna tie that dot, let's see if we can show you, that orange dot to the top here. And as time goes on, we can sync that to this path that's all lit up. We also need to get our shadow dot in here. So this is a little easier. We're just gonna click shadow dot, outline dot. You're going to right click center and hit uh, expression. And then all we're gonna say here is this is going to be uh, main dot dot center. So all that does is mean that the background dot is going to follow the main dot around now. Now we have that in there, let's add our spline file. So if you click on your main dot and click spline, you can click this 
uh, fit to page view here. Oh, yeah, you gotta click that first. Now I can fit it. We can right click this pink line and say import spline. Then we can go to our downloads and grab our spline file, hit open. We'll click this fit to page again or zoom to fit. And there we go. Now as we move, let's zoom in on this. As we move this red bar here, you're gonna see that dot move along our path. And then what you get is areas like this where it's flat. That's somewhere where I stopped for a while for whatever reason. I think right here is where I smashed my head on a stick. Um, and I was moving along pretty good. And then I was flat for a while. So when it's flat like that, that dot's not moving. This graph is showing me uh, percentage completion across the path. So not moving, not moving, not moving, not moving. Eventually I get sorted out again, and I'm gonna start moving. So that's it. That's our whole dot animated across our path. What we need to do now is put that under a video and sync it up. So back here in the edit tab, so I was just in Fusion, if I click on edit, I now have this GPS overlay. And I can move it down on top of my video. Sweet. So it's a little big, so let's uh, zoom out on that. And let's put it in the left-hand corner. Oh, other way. Cool. And we need to sync it. So I know there's a spot in this video where I turn my GPS on. GPS is off here. I can see that I'm obviously not in the right spot because my dot says I'm pretty far along this line. But I know coming up right here, I'm about to hit go on this GPS. All right, there it is. That just started right there. So what I need to do is I'll put a little marker right here just so I know where the start point should be. And then I can move this tutorial, this line, the uh, file we just made, right to the beginning there. So if I zoom in here, I can even go a little farther, and go right there. So now I know that as I ride, and let's uh, change this to half, so it plays back a little smoother. You see this dot is moving as I'm heading along the course. And you can play with this to get it perfect. Um, but basically you just, you have that full file now and it is synced to your video. You just need to line it up a little bit. You know, the, the actual movement is there. You're just gonna line it up so that you can see. If you make a right turn, take a look at it. The way I was checking a lot of this out is um, if I back up here and I go and try to find like a wide left. There we go, I'm starting to make a left. And it's kind of tricky because you're working within hours with the data. So eventually I make a hard left here and you can line this up a little better to say, okay, that's probably where I was at in this case. That's it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna get to the technical part of this. So I'm gonna pause this video and hop on over to VS Code here if I can find it. There it is. So what this is doing, this is just uh, three files. Uh, you have a index HTML, a script, and a styles. Styles here is just the look of it all. Um, it's making it look pretty for you, so it doesn't really matter. Um, index is what's displayed on the screen. So let's bring up the website here. So index is gonna say, put a logo, logo here, put some text here, put a file type here, put a uh, choose file there, all it's gonna do. It's not gonna be very pretty, but it'll put it on there. Um, CSS is gonna make that pretty. And then JavaScript is what's actually doing the backend conversions and all that. So on, sorry, my camera's right in front of me there. So on index.html, or sorry, on uh, script.js, when you uh, import your file, file input here, uh, and you select your GPX, it's going to first create the SVG file. So that is generate SVG, track points, main color, shadow color, main width, shadow width, and shadow offset. These are all the things that you're able to put in on the website. So if I choose this here, come on. So these inputs here are what you're able to set, and that's what's gonna be shown on the uh, function call here in JavaScript. To be honest, I haven't gone through all this code too uh, harshly. I use ChatGPT for a lot of this. Um, and mainly what it's gonna do though is take your ride and fit it into a 1920 by 1080 box, whatever, whatever one is uh, hit first basically. So in this case, 1080 is hit before 1920. So it crops to 1080 
and then crops the sides to whatever, you know, some margin outside of this. So that's what this is doing. It's finding your height, basically what's your biggest dimension, cropping at 1080 or 1920, um, and then finds the width or, or height off of that. And it sets your stroke. So this is just your uh, main path. It's just creating a stroke, a width of the stroke based on what you entered in on the website. Um, and then joining those all together. There is some like, uh, where is that? There's some like type, how it joins it, how it joins each of the lines together is in here as well. And then you've got your shadow path, a circle and a circle outline. Um, all of that, the circle here has to go in the center of the screen. It's some bug that I found in DaVinci. Uh, if you don't put the circle in the dead center of the screen, the handle for that circle is still in the center of the screen. So the handle is right here, but the circle might be over here. So when you go to move that or map it to your path, the handle gets mapped to the path, but the circle is offset by that amount. So it just kind of follows it in a weird way. So by putting the circle in the middle of the screen, that's what uh, allows you to, to get around that issue. And you're also able to name each of these. So I gave him an ID, outline dot, main dot, shadow path, and main path. And that's what allows your, if I can find it here, open in Fusion. That's what allows each of these to have a name, shadow path, main path, outline dot, and main dot. Otherwise, they just show up as generic path one, two, and three. So it's a lot cleaner if you're able to do that. If we get back to the code here, your uh, path data, this is just figuring out exactly where the path, what it needs to look like for the SG, F, SVG file. Um, and then it's going to append shadow path, main path, circle outline, and circle. It does this in order of uh, back to front. So you want your shadow path in the very back, you want your main circle in the very front. That's how it's putting these into the SVG file. And then it returns the SVG. From there, down here where it's handling And that file. is the exact moment when I lost interest in doing a full explanation of this. Uh, if you have questions about the code, download it, take a look at it. If you still have questions, put them in the comments. If you have questions about how to use the tool or ideas to add to this tool, put them in the comments as well. If you've made it this far in the video and still haven't subscribed to the channel or haven't liked the video, please do so. I hate begging for that kind of stuff, but it really does help. Otherwise, the tool itself is really designed for Strava right now. Um, I use GPS uh, devices to log my rides and then those get synced to Strava. So I built a tool from Strava exports. If you're using something other than Strava and having issues, put them in the comments. You know, maybe we'll get a file from you and test some things out. Uh, GPX file format should be pretty standard, but I'm sure there's variations uh, that, that can come up and cause issues. Um, as for the future of this, I'd like to add uh, trail features. One of the guys that watches my videos here had a comment on one of the posts that I did um, saying how you could add the jumps or the drops or the uh, berms, whatever it is, bridges on a trail that you're riding on so that if somebody was watching this pre-ride, they would have an idea where those features were uh, on the trail. I think that's a really good idea. I think that'd be neat to have. I'd also like to be able to overlay uh, GPS on my drone footage. Um, I tried with the Mini 3, the DJI Mini 3 that I have, but I was not able to get the GPS data off of the drone. You'd think it'd be there. Um, I'll have to keep messing with that. If you guys know how, comment it. That'd be great. Otherwise, stay tuned for hopefully next week. We'll see if we get a video out or not. Thanksgiving's coming up. Um, if not, it'll be in two weeks. I'll have a video out, and uh, I think we'll be repairing some new hubs. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.